Yeah, the great thing about house hacking too is it's a very low risk strategy. You know, if you're flipping houses and there's a market downturn, um, you might get stuck with that house and not be able to sell it for a profit. Absolutely. Um, and there's a lot of other risk involved in real estate. With house hacking, you're going to live somewhere anyways, right? You're going to pay rent somewhere anyways. So now you're going to go to this house in like worst case scenario, if you can't fill it with tenants, which, you know, historically um, being able to rent uh, during a downturn, like a real estate downturn, uh, historically, there's not a lot of issue there. It's more of the value of the house that is impacted, not so much rent rates or um, occupancy levels. Yeah. But if you do have issues finding tenants, like you're you're just paying a full mortgage now, right? That's what you would have been doing anyways. You were paying rent. You were paying down someone else's mortgage. So you might as well house hack and then take on the risk, you know, the risk of not being able to find tenants. And if you have vacancy, it's really not that big of a deal. It's not going to impact you much. Absolutely. And so like two things to consider for people is number one, if you look at the rent rates from 2007 to 2012, which was, you know, the peak of the uh, peak of the housing market in 2007 and the bottom of the park, uh, housing market, which was 2012, um, rent rates plateaued. They didn't go down. They didn't go up. They, you know, depending on the market. If you look at the U.S. market in general, they plateaued, meaning that they just flatlined. All right. And so even in downturns, people actually need more rentals. Uh, you know, if, if there's a downturn in the future, future, generally speaking, it means that people are losing their primary residences. So what what does that mean? They means that they turn to renting. Right. Or this whole push for work optional or the ability to have uh, freedom and, and people traveling and stuff. That means that more people are going to be renting. People want people don't want the liability of owning a house and, and being stuck in one location. They want to be able to move around. So they rent. And that means that rent to man is going to increase. And duplexes and triplexes are much more desirable for a potential tenant than a massive apartment building. Because guess what? If you only have two or three tenants, it means that it's a better general experience for the tenant rather than a massive uh, building that generally speaking is going to have issues. You're going to have issues with tenants making noise and and all the other issues that come with it. And so the thing that you and I have found is that we find much better tenants when we have a duplex or a fourplex than generally speaking, helping uh, a bigger, um, you know, apartment building. So something to consider there, you're going to have rental demand, generally speaking. And even if you don't, you can, you have the control now to lower rents a little bit, to keep it occupied. You know, if you put your money in the stock market, you're at the mercy of the market. You're at the mercy of the company that you put your money into. But if you own the asset, you have the ability to forgive a month's rent or to lower the rent for a month or whatever you have to do, break it up in payments. Um, you know, you have that kind of control that that other assets don't have.